Hi, I'm Rob Shore from Corient, and today I'm going to talk about a pretty interesting technology from Corient, something we call Corient Aware Technology. What Corient Aware is, is a software module that's designed to overcome what we think is one of the major challenges, one of the major deficiencies of today's optical networks, and that's essentially awareness. The idea behind Aware is to overcome the, the lack of knowledge of the actual way a wavelength is performing in the network at any given time. The reason why that lack of knowledge is a big problem is because when you go to plan wavelengths in a network, you're doing it based all off of estimations. Yeah, you know how well a wavelength can perform, but in terms of how it's going to actually behave in a network, you have to estimate all of the different uh, optical impairments that might be in the network, right? All the uh, four-way mixing effects, the DGD, all of that stuff you estimate. In addition to the, you estimate the other wavelengths that might be on the network. So you, you essentially subtract from the performance of that wavelength as you're planning it, even the initial deployment of it. Then, of course, you also have to take into account degradation over time, the way the fiber is going to degrade, the way amplifiers are going to degrade, other possible wavelengths that might get added to the network. You have to calculate all that in and factor all that in. So essentially, you're deploying a wavelength and you're estimating its performance far below the way it's actually performing uh, the day you install it, and even probably much less than the way it's actually going to be perform at the end of life. Again, because you have to add all this extra margin in there to ensure you don't fail. So again, the, the real problem with this is in not having that awareness and having to do all of this kind of offline estimated planning uh, is that you underutilize the resources in your network. A wavelength, most wavelengths and networks have a lot more gas in the engine um, than people actually can take credit for and, and actually utilize. Uh, on top of that, another big problem is that uh, a lot of times wavelengths in the network, uh, network operators have no idea how they're performing, how close they are to failure. There could be dozens of wavelengths or hundreds of wavelengths in a network that are right on the hairy edge of failure and network operators have no idea because they can only tell there's a failure when a failure actually occurs. So again, it's this lack of knowledge, this lack of awareness of the actual performance of a wavelength uh, that really causes a lot of problems in a network. And this is exactly where current aware technology comes in. So, Corient Aware Technology is a software module that fits inside the Corient Transcend software suite. Specifically, it's part of the Transcend Symphony uh, portion of the Transcend software suite. And the key interesting aspect of it is while it is part of the Transcend software suite, they are independent software modules, they're independent software functions, and they can operate either within the Transcend hierarchy or they can operate independently in conjunction in other orchestration environments. So you don't need the entire Transcend software suite and all the Corient products uh, to take advantage of uh, the capabilities and the benefits that Corient Aware provides. So, into Corient Aware. Corient Aware has two specific software components associated with it. One component we call the Optical Performance Engine, and the other one we call the Margin Processing Engine. So what do these two things do? Let's take a look at the Margin Processing Engine, because it's probably the most interesting uh, component. What the margin processing engine does is it actually extracts and reads real-time information from the network, readily available information, things like forward error corrections, amplifier performance levels, real things that you can extract from a network and any network. No specialized hardware required. You don't need advanced DSPs, you don't need all kinds of new Corient equipment to make this happen. It can read this information from virtually any OTN-based network and anything that's OTN encapsulated that has forward error correction buffers. All right, so again, it's one of the big advantages of Corient Aware is that it can be applied to any network. But what the margin processing engine does is it reads that information and it actually determines the actual performance of wavelengths in real networks. So instead of having to guess at how your wavelength is performing based on a bunch of network estimates, you can actually measure the real performance of that wavelength, exactly where that wavelength is performing and how much it has before it fails, right? How much margin it has before it fails. We call that residual margin, right? That's a residual margin of how much margin that wavelength has, how much further that wavelength can be pushed um, before you start seeing some errors. And this by itself is incredibly valuable information. There's a lot of different ways you can use this information, and some of those I'm going to cover in a minute. But one way that this can be really useful uh, is when used in conjunction with the other half of Corient Aware, which is the uh, optical performance engine. The optical performance engine is a real-time wavelength planning solution. Instead of doing offline planning and estimating how far wavelengths can go and, and then applying those to the network, the optical performance engine uses real-time information fed from the margin processing engine to use that to determine 
uh, how far wavelengths can go and the speed at which those wavelengths can be, uh, can be tuned. This is especially useful when you have tunable wavelengths. You can tune modulation and tune baud rates. Using the MPE in conjunction with the OPE, you can really get the most out of every wavelength. So let's talk about the advantages. Now that you know the residual margin, you can use that for wavelength planning. Uh, what are the other benefits that you get from having this awareness, this optical awareness? Okay? Well, one of the key things, of course, the most straightforward thing, is just better troubleshooting. You can be more proactive. You can know exactly how different wavelengths are performing at any given time. And you can know as wavelengths are degrading and head those off before they become real problems in your network. So that's one thing. We're, we call this uh, network health checks, these optical health checks uh, in the network. Uh, another way is improved network performance. You can have two wavelengths that are essentially leaving the same location and passing through a lot of the same locations, but maybe one is going a short distance and the other one's going a really long distance. Well, based on understanding the real performance of those wavelengths, you can actually steal performance from one wavelength and give it to another wavelength. So you can actually, wavelengths that need to go really far, you can actually give them extra power, right? You can manage them differently if you understand exactly how much I can steal from the short distance wavelength. So again, you can optimize the performance of the way wavelengths are acting in the network. So that's first two things. Third thing uh, is more accurate planning. When you go to plan actual wavelengths in the network, now it's not based on a bunch of estimates on the way you think things are going to perform. You can actually use historical information from wavelengths in the network. You can use the information to see how they've actually degraded over time, how they're actually impacted by other impairments in the network, to do better planning of new wavelengths. Again, the whole, all these things are used to get more out of your network enable you to buy less transponders, regenerate less often, have more potential restoration paths in network, just get more out of the network. And the interesting thing is these three things, they can all be done on any technology. Because again, it doesn't require special DSPs, it doesn't require special hardware, and I can do it on wavelengths in my network right now today. It's one of the key benefits of the Corrient Aware approach is that it doesn't require special technology to work. Now, this is all could be done on legacy technology, right? 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig. What's more interesting is we start getting into these newer types of interfaces. These interfaces that enable you to tune modulation and tune uh, baud rates, where you, have, you can use wavelengths differently. The reason why it's so interesting is because you might plan with your offline planning tool. You might plan a wavelength to go from point A to point B. Your offline tool, which has all these kind of estimates and what, it might say, hey, I can only go 200 gig on that path. Well, when in reality, if you had better information, you can actually understand better how that wavelength can be tuned and maybe push it even further. So either you can do that to end of life. But there's another really interesting aspect because wavelengths might exist for a long time. If you have a wavelength that's going to be there for 20 years or 10 years or whatever, Historically, you had to plan to end of life because you couldn't track that wavelength over time. Well, now with Corient Aware, maybe between point A and Z, I can't go 400 gig forever for end of life, but maybe I can support 400 gig transmissions for two years. And after two years, it'll degrade enough that I have to now ratchet it back to 200 gig. Well, with Corient Aware now, you can actually say, hey, great, you know what? I'm going to buy just a single wavelength, put it up at 400 gig, and ride that for you know, two, three years, however long I can. And then when it degrades enough, I'll know about it because I have the awareness. And then I can go back and address that, maybe ratchet down to 200 gig, and then put in another 200 gig resources to maintain that same bandwidth. But again, I've now saved myself a bunch of money for all that period of time. Another, of course, big advantage of this is when you do optical mesh restoration, you're doing all these calculations on what the possible restoration paths are in the network. Well, again, you typically do that the same way you plan traditional wavelengths. So you're doing it a lot of times based on end-of-life estimations. But restoration paths don't need to exist for very long. Ultimately, you want to get back to your original path. So when you have a failure and you're looking for potential restoration paths, you can use the actual understanding of real-time residual margin measurements to increase vastly the number of potential paths in the network because that path doesn't need to, list to live till end of life. You only need to use it for a short period of time. So I only care about current values. So again, that's another thing, right? Especially with these more versatile optical transmission systems with all the tunability, understanding uh, the actual residual margin, you can actually turn that residual margin into money. But I can take residual margin and use it to turn up the bandwidth on the individual wavelength.
The last piece of this is now how you couple these wavelengths with the actual optical line systems. As we're moving now into an era where almost all systems have kind of flexi grid environments where I can change the amount of spectral, uh, spectrum that I give a specific wavelength. And of course, as you change baud rate, you're changing the amount of spectrum uh, that a channel can use. I can actually marry these two things together. I can actually dedicate spectrum based on the performance necessary. So take, for example, a wavelength that can be, I can tune to 400 gig by either going to 64 gigabaud or to 64 qualm. Either way, I can get to, to, to 400 gig. Well, 64 qualm has a lot less performance, although it uses a lot less spectrum. So in this scenario, I can actually measure it and say, hey, does this wavelength actually need to go to 64 gigabaud and require more spectrum and I can allocate more spectrum to it? Or do I have enough performance to do that at 64, gig, uh, 64 qualm and use less spectrum? And oh, by the way, another interesting thing is I can actually monitor that over time. So maybe I start at 64 qualm with less spectrum, and then as that wavelength degrades, because I know the real-time margin of that wavelength, the residual margin of that wavelength, I can actually start adding more spectrum. I can tune it up to, you know, uh, 54 gigabaud, 64 gigabaud, whatever it is. I can increase the amount of spectrum uh, and get better performance out of it over time. So this is the whole concept of Corient Aware technology. The idea is putting more power in network operators' hands to get a better understanding of the actual way their network and the wavelengths in their network are performing to uh, get all of these different benefits uh, out of having that awareness. That brings us to the end of the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, talk about Corient Aware technologies. If you have any, uh, want any more information about Corient Aware or any of Corient's other solutions, uh, please feel, uh, visit us at corient.com. Thanks for watching.